Friends, years ago I was traveling to the country of Haiti and I was serving there um, with members of a previous church I served. And one of the most in interesting things that I've ever encountered took place while we were doing door-to-door -door evangelism. See, during this time, what we would do is we would knock on doors with hygiene kits, basic hygiene kits to help uh, folks that needed help. And that would be a doorway for us to be able to share the hope that we have in Jesus. And um, there was a young woman, a, a young mom that introduced us, that brought us into our home, um, and she gave us the opportunity to talk with her a little bit. We invited her to the church that was around the corner. Um, we had representatives of that church that were with us. And she told us something that was fascinating. She said, I've, I've been there once, and the one time that I went, uh, they sat me in the back uh, because I wasn't dressed nice enough to be there. And as soon as I heard that, I thought, how could that be? Everyone around us seems to be in a place that uh, is marked by poverty. And so I was just fascinated. And I talked to one of our leaders that was with us from the church and I asked him, what, what do you wear to church? And he said, well, I wear a suit. And I thought, well, where'd you, where did you get that suit? And he told us uh, that he actually found the suit in a bag that was left by some other visitors to their mission there. And so he took that suit and he had been wearing that. And I thought that was a fascinating illustration for the ways in which one, we can dress up to hide our poverty and two, we can sometimes look down on other people. And I don't say this to make you think ill of Haiti. I learned more about God that was than uh, in a few days there than I have in any other experiences uh, in my time in America. Wonderful place, good people. Um, but they have adopted some things in the American church in the way that we think about poor, about us being poor and about how we treat other people that are poor. The, the book of James in the New Testament has an interesting corrective of that in chapter two. I just wanna share a few verses, but chapter two verses one through 13 gets right into the middle of this. The beginning of this text says, my brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Later on, he reminds us, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor, he says. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Is it not those that have much that are coming down on you? See, I love this passage because James does three things. He reminds us first that we are all poor. We love the widow and the orphan because without Christ, we are lost and we have no family. We are reminded by James in this passage that no matter what we have financially or no matter what we have in our family or no matter what is going on apart from Christ, we really lack. And it is in that place that God has brought us into being. And so long before we ever see ourselves as loving the poor, if we don't see ourselves as poor, we create an us and them dynamic. And so that's the first corrective. The second corrective is even more provocative. James says, if we don't love the poor, we are actually going to miss out at the power of God and the way God works in the world. He says, isn't it not the humble and the poor that God is using to raise up and do beautiful things? Let me give you another example. Uh, a few years ago, I was serving a church in East Texas and during that time, there was a shooting at a church and the pastor lost his life during that time. And so myself and a few others, we were a resource church around the corner and we were asked to come and help a prayer gathering for this local rural church that was grieving. And so I felt inadequate. I didn't know how this was gonna go. I walked into this place where you could still see destruction from the event, the crisis that had happened. And as I got ready to try and lead, the members of this church began to pray. And when they began to pray out of their desperation and their grief, I saw the face of God in ways I couldn't even imagine. Even the very widow who just lost her husband was praying for the one who had committed the crime and for the church and the congregation. It is in the moment where I went to the poor, to the impoverished, or to those that lack, those that are desperate, that I saw the face of God moving in beautiful ways. Friends, maybe a challenge this week, sometimes we feel like we might not see God at work in our world. And I just wanna challenge us, I think for many reasons, just because we keep our world very sterile. 
and we don't seek the opportunities to be with the people that God would be with. See, Jesus spent more time with the sinners and tax collectors. Those that the onlookers would say, why is he hanging out with those people? And it is in those places that salvation came, that healing and hope and resurrection came. And I think if we want to be a part of what God's doing in the world, we need to be in those places as well. But we can only do that if we remember that we are poor apart from Christ, that Jesus is our all in all. If we remember that this week, I think we'll see some things that will surprise us. May it be so in your life and mine. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.